On this episode of Living the Dream, Jimmy and Louisa are back in Grand Cayman for the final episode of the season. They hook up with Sunset Divers to explore some wrecks. And then head offshore to drop chum and hook into some manic tuna and marlin. All right, guys, well, we just hooked up to a marlin out here. There it is, nice. Woo hoo! Woo hoo! All right, he's coming at the boat. Nice. Woo hoo hoo! There he goes. All right, guys, we got some color here. Woo! Look at that thing ripping it up. Whoa, dude, what a fish. Woo! There you go, Cameron, your turn. Another nice elephant tuna. Good job, Cameron. This is Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson. Presented by Salt Life. Live salty. Good fish. That, that's what she was fighting all that yeah. time. Man, what a fish. Wow. Doesn't get any better than Baja. So Louisa and I met up with Sunset Divers again, and we went out and did a two wreck dive. The first wreck was the Kitty Wake, and the second wreck was just a smaller wreck that was kind of scattered around in shallower water. There's always so many cool things to see when you dive the Kitty Wake. I mean, right after I jumped in the water, I saw all kinds of big horse-eyed jacks in a school just swimming right by the top of the boat. And I mean, from the second you get in and you start seeing that life, it's that way right through the end of the dive. And that's one of the coolest parts about the Kitty Wake. Kitty Wake's now laying on its side. It used to be standing upright. We dove it for years and years when it was upright, but just like two years ago, a hurricane came through and kind of knocked it over, and now it's laying on its side. And as I started swimming over the wreck, I saw a really good sized dog snapper, and it swam right up to me and passed me. Right after I saw that dog snapper, I bumped into a beautiful hogfish. And that hogfish was just chilling on the wreck and pecking away at it, but it didn't even care that I was there with it. So I was literally inches away from this huge hogfish just watching him do his thing on the wreck. And then I followed the hogfish around the corner a little bit, and he ended up going up into a hole and disappearing into the wreck. And then I saw a black grouper kind of up near this part of the wreck that was just leaning over the top of it, and I followed the black grouper up. There's all kinds of neat grouper and snapper and things on this wreck, and I like game fish, so the more game fish I see, the better I like it. I do like seeing all the colorful fish, and there's plenty of those around on this wreck as well, because right beside the wreck is a big reef. So on the reef, you're gonna see all those angel fish and the tiger grouper, and you'll also see mutton snapper and the other little colorful fish and all the different things that are there. On the second dive on the smaller wreck, as soon as I jumped in the water, I saw a barracuda swim right by me. I mean, he came right up to me and checked me out. After I swam past that barracuda, I came to an area of just shallow sand with about a million garden eels everywhere on it. And I had to swim across this long stretch of sand with all the garden eels before I got to the little wreck. That wreck also had a pretty big school of schoolmaster snapper that were hanging out on it. And again, I love seeing them because I love seeing the game fish. And we saw some other snapper and reef fish and things. But the highlight of that dive was probably the turtle. So that turtle was just kind of pecking at the coral and the rocks and just eating things off of it. And I was chilling there by him. I was taking pictures and doing video and just kind of mixing it up and having a good time with that turtle. 
Like every other time that I dove with Sunset Divers, I was not disappointed. We saw so many cool things on this dive, and I'm sure next time I'm back in Grand Cayman, I'll be out there diving with them again. We'll be back for more Living the Dream right after the break. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by Salt Life, Live Salty, Engel Coolers, the original high performance cooler, Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck, ACR Electronics, the science of survival, and by American Fishing Wire. With our Grand Caymanian trip coming to a close and the Bahamian season at its end, Jimmy and Louisa rise early and head out with Captain Stephen Ebanks of Real Vibes Charters one last time to hit 12 Mile Bank in hopes of landing some tuna and wahoo. So Louisa and I were back out on 12 Mile Bank, one of our favorite places to fish in Grand Cayman. And we started off the morning by catching a few small blackfin tuna that we were gonna use for chunk bait. After doing some chunking and getting some lines in the water, I ended up getting a pretty good hit. All right guys, well we just took up to a marlin out here. We're on 12 mile bank out of Grand Cayman. We had a blue marlin come up and hit one of the chunk baits. So we're chunking for tuna and uh, he's sounding right now. He's going deep and this is one of the lighter rods. It only has 50 pound high seas main line on it down to a 60 pound Quattro fluorocarbon leader and a six aught J hook. There it is, there it is. He's on the surface, he's on the surface. Come on, give us a jump. Man, it was so awesome when I saw that marlin start jumping all over the place. There it is, nice. Woo hoo! Woo hoo! All right, he's coming at the boat. Nice! Woo hoo hoo! There he goes! He's going straight down now. He's not playing around. So our conditions out here today are really nice. We only have about probably six to ten knot wind right now and uh, one foot or less seas. So really nice seas and uh, not really the best conditions for marlin. They like it a little rougher. But uh, anytime one's going to come up in the spread and start hitting all of the chunk bait, we'll take it. And he's just still going down. He's been going down since that last set of jumps you guys seen. Marlin is a lot of work. I mean, you really have to work to get a marlin in the boat, especially when you're doing a stand-up. This is the part of marlin fishing that's tough. There he goes again. Look at that, just pulling the line out. Marlin are really pretty fish when you're fighting them and you get them near the boat. You can actually see them change colors. They'll go from light to dark to getting bright blue stripes on them. It's kind of neat. They change colors kind of like a dolphin does. Getting real close. There he is, there he is. All right, go, go to neutral. Woo. Look how lit up that fish is. He's right under the motor, give me a little gas. He's real deep. Watch your, watch your motor, give me gas, give me gas, give me gas. He's out, he's out, he's out. He was right on it. He wants to keep going underneath there. We're on the boat. Got that, look at that. Woo! Somebody here, take this rod so I can land him. We got that marlin position perfect and I went ahead and grabbed him and tried to land him. All right, here we go. And he was just knocking and shaking me all over the place. Woo! All right, guys. And there's the marlin. Woo! We get a little look at him. He's gonna kick a little, but there it is. Nice blue marlin. Man, what a fish. Woo! Very strong fish. We'll be back for more Living the Dream right after the break.
Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by CNH Lures. Be a winner with CNH Lures. Plantation on Crystal River, the place to stay and play along Florida's nature coast. Cayman Islands Angling Club, come experience sport fishing in paradise. And by Salt Life, live salty. Before the break, Jimmy and Louisa set adrift out on 12 Mile Bank with Stephen E. Banks of Real Vibes Charters and started chumming for tuna and wahoo. But things didn't go exactly as planned. The first fish to hit Jimmy's line turned out to be a blue marlin. There it is, nice! Woohoo! Woohoo! All right, he's coming out the boat. Nice! Woohoo! There he goes. It was a long match for the crew, but even at the end, the marlin still Woo! had plenty of fight in him. All right, guys, and there's the marlin. Woo! After we released the marlin, Steven ended up hooking up. It's been a little slower today than the last time we were out here with Steven. Um, had a few on that have pulled the hook already. We landed a nice marlin, and uh, this is probably the third or fourth tuna we've had hooked up this morning, but they've all came off right away. This one's uh, seeming to stay buttoned up pretty good. Steven, what's the best time of year to come out here and catch tuna like this? Now in December, January. December, January, February. Can you get them year round or is it just the winter months? Well, we've been getting them, we've been getting them year round, but this year has been pretty good from the tuna. Yeah. But the hot months are around January, January, February. All right. What kind of trips do you do? Is it mostly offshore fishing or, or what all do you offer? I offered offshore deep sea fishing like what we're doing now. Yeah. Reef fishing, do the stingray city, snorkeling. All that good stuff. All right, guys, so he does everything. Offshore, reef fishing, stingray city, anything you want to do here in Grand Cayman on a boat, come check out Steven with Real Vibes Charters, and he'll put you on the fish. And today, we're going to give him a little bit of a workout out here, because he's going <laughs> to reel in a few of these, too. <laughs> Starting to hurt yet, Steve? He's putting it to you? Yeah, he's putting a little heat on me now, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> You guys don't get to see the whole fight here. These fights are lasting. I mean, he's already probably about 15 minutes in and he's probably got twice that to go still. Tuna don't come in quick. So if you want to do this kind of fishing, you know, do a little working out before you come out here because these fish will put you to the test. Tuna are, in my opinion, the strongest fish pound for pound. They fight from beginning to end. I mean, right even up to the last foot that they have underwater. They're just not giving up and they will give it everything they have until that gaff is in their head. All right, guys, we got some color here. Oh, yeah, that's a good fish. Look at that fish, man. Steven was getting that tuna closer and closer to the boat, and we could see it right below the boat through the water. Woo, look at that thing ripping it up. When it was in range, I stuck it and pulled it in the boat. Get it in. Nice fish, man. Well done. Good job, Steve. We were so stoked to have a tuna in the boat already that early in the morning. Whoa, dude, what a fish. We got one of them in, huh? Well it's done. Alive, buddy. Got him. Yeah, buddy. Not a huge one, but he's got some fight in him. <laughs> if you guys see, this is why we use that high seas fluorocarbon leader. Take a good look in his mouth there. You see those super sharp teeth? That line's rubbing all up and down on it. And that right there could easily cut you off. Give me a little support on the belly, Steven. Hold his belly so I can show him those teeth a little better. Look at this, guys. Look real close here. Get a good shot on those teeth. You see this? The fish is twitching a little. But that line just can rub up and down on those teeth there. Easily cut you off. With that good leader, it holds. It looks like we're going to go ahead and get this guy in the angle. He's ready to go, huh? Tuna are also one of the best sashimis you can have. So that's one of the reasons we target them, because they're so good to eat. After setting the drift again and chunking up that barracuda, Cameron and Steven both hooked up. There you go, Cameron, your turn. All right, guys, looks like Cameron's got a tuna on and Steven's got a marlin on. Cameron's gonna have to fight his fish straight up and down. 
and Steven's gonna be fighting his out. Who knows where it's gonna come up over there. Cameron's tuna came in pretty quick, but it looked like Steven was gonna be fighting that marlin for a little while. All right, we got one of them in. Ah, fish number one right here. Another nice elephant tuna. Good job, Cameron. Good fish, buddy. Woo, well, this is a pretty one right here, that's for sure. Man, what a fish. Good job. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're gonna have to chase that fish. Steven's marlin was quite a bit bigger than mine, and it was giving him a hard time, man. It was really making him work for it. We're having to chase this marlin down. They strip out a lot of line. They go out, tuna go down. The marlin was getting pretty close, and we could even see it through the water, but he just didn't want to give up. Oh, yeah, I see him there under the water. Oh, nice jump. Watch out, guys, he's going to the bow. He's gonna go to the bow. It just kept pulling and pulling, and it wouldn't come up. It was just kind of trying to pull down, no matter how hard Steven was pulling up. I thought I was gonna be able to put my hands on him soon, but this marlin had other plans. What's your average size marlin out here, Steve? Uh, 150, 180 pounds. Okay, so they tend to be on the smaller side out here in Cayman. So you can land them a little quicker, fight them on stand-up gear. It's, uh, it's a fun thing to do, that's for sure. Looked like Steven was getting beat down by that marlin. <laughs> it definitely didn't look easy. All right, Steven, let's get you hooked up. After that long fight, the line finally chafed through, and Steven lost that marlin right below the boat. Broke off. Oh. Not the way we wanted it to end, but hey, you know what? It happens sometimes. We'll be back for more Living the Dream right after the break. For Jimmy and Louisa, it's their last day in the Cayman Islands, and they decided to make the most of it. Under normal circumstances, that would mean reeling in fish till their arms hurt. But the weather offshore has turned to rough seas. But inshore, the sun is still shining. So they head over to Grand Cayman's Avis Car Rental and decide to ride around the island in style. Designed in the 1950s by infamous car designer Sir Alec Isagonis, the Moak turned quickly from a British classic to a Caribbean icon. It isn't hard to imagine why Avis would want a car like this in their fleet. One look at this exclusive rental and an oceanfront drive seems irresistible. After a scenic drive around Grand Cayman's West Bay and the Georgetown Harbors, Jimmy and Louisa decide on a swim in shore, but they won't be alone for it. They park their moke and head over to meet up with Captain Richard Orr of Blue Water Excursions to go hang out at Stingray City for the afternoon. Louisa and I hooked up with Captain Richard Orr of Blue Water Excursions, and we pulled up to Stingray City just to go hang out with the Stingrays because we were dealt another uh, rough day, so we couldn't get offshore to go fishing. And Richard does a lot more than just wahoo and tuna and dolphin and marlin and all the other things you've seen us catch with him. He also does tours to Stingray City, so we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to take him up on one of those excursions. It was really rough out there. The waves were just kind of banging us around when we were feeding the stingrays and knocking us up and down. And it was very stirred up. You could really see it from the top view when you're on top of the boat and stuff looking down. You could see all the sand that gets moved around. But the good thing about the Cayman Islands is that even when it's very rough and windy, the water's still clear in most places. So even though it was very stirred up for the Cayman Islands, it was still plenty clear enough for us to have a good time, swim with the Stingrays, and get some decent footage out of it. Over the years, Stingray City has been covered by National Geographic, as well as many other international magazines, and has become a major attraction for island visitors. They offer several locations to swim with the Stingrays, but this sandbar that Jimmy and Louisa chose is most popular among them. Whichever your choice, your captain will make you feel at ease with your newfound friends. And if you're feeling brave, you might even try feeding one. In the Cayman Islands, there are plenty of attractions both near and far. But among them, Stingray City is one of the most family friendly. At the sandbar location, the water is only three to four feet deep. 
And no matter the weather, it's always clear. Smaller species of stingray are gentle in their curiosity. And as you walk the sandbar, they glide by you brushing your leg or hands to get a feel on what you are. And some lucky visitors will even get a chance at holding one. It's always fun feeding the stingrays and picking them up and kind of letting them come up by your mouth and kissing them and holding on to them and getting pictures with them. Stingray City is something the whole family could do, you know, from elementary school aged kids all the way up to older people. It's, it's really not a problem. It's not like super hard to do. You can have a life jacket on if you like it. There's guides out there that know what they're doing. Stingray City is definitely a family activity that the whole family could do. And I would highly recommend doing that when you come to the Cayman Islands. There's so many different things you could do here, but that Stingray City trip is one of those trips that never disappoint. The Stingrays always show up and you just have a good time out there. And it's nice shallow water and it's fun. Windy, calm, it doesn't matter. For more fishing and diving action, follow along on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok at Captain Jimmy Nelson. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson was brought to you by Salt Life. Live salty.